worship the Lord. I want us to worship God for just a moment. We talked about one sound. Everybody say one sound. There is a kingdom sound. There is a kingdom sound. Everybody say that. There is a kingdom sound. Say it again. There is a kingdom sound. And I want you to understand this, that there is always a sound that precedes a move of God. Everybody say that. There's always a sound that precedes the move of God. Whenever you will find deliverance, wherever you will find healing, wherever you find a move of God, it is always associated with a sound. I want us to take just maybe 30 seconds and we're gonna, we're gonna sing this song. We're gonna raise it as an offering to the Lord. But I want us to take about maybe just 30 seconds, if you will, Brother, I just want you to minister on that, on that guitar. I want you to raise your hands in his presence and let's just worship God all over this room. Hallelujah. Beloved in Christ, I'm excited to come your way another Tuesday for our Bible studies or teaching service. Before I start, I would like to pray and just sing a song and then We'll go into the word for today. Jehovah, we praise you. Jehovah, we praise you. We lift your name. We lift your name, Jehovah, we praise you, oh Jehovah, we praise you, Jehovah, we praise you we lift your name we lift your name Jehovah we praise you our heavenly father we want to thank you today for the gift of life we praise you for all that you have done in our lives. For what shall we render unto you for all your benefit, for all that you've bestowed on us? We say glory, honor, and praise be unto your name. For it is your hand that has kept us. It is your glory that has lifted us even to, to, to where we are today. We are excited. We are happy. We are grateful for life, for peace, even in the midst of the storm. We thank you today. We ask that, Lord, you give us understanding even as we delve deep into your word. Grant us peace everywhere, every home, in every nation. Lord, we pray that let your peace be still, even in the, in the midst of the storm. We thank you, Jesus, for an answered prayer. Amen. Okay, so thank you, beloved, for all that uh, you've been doing, for following us. We know that uh, it's not that easy, you know, you have to get your data on all the time. But I tell you that this will not last it will soon pass and life will be normal. Even though things will not be the same way that it used to be, I know there will be some, some changes, you know. Expect some changes. Things are not going to be the same way, but, you know, everything is going to be fine because God is with us. You know, in the days when the plague hit Egypt and God said that, uh, gave a specification that the lamb, the animal should be slaughtered and the blood be used at the doorpost. And you get in there till the plague passed. The plague passed. And when everything passed, everything was back to normal. So I tell you that everything is going to come back to normal. If you believe it, just shout it, I believe it, wherever you are. Today, I want to uh, bring our mind on something Jesus told us so that we would not be taken on our words. 
And so the teaching that I want to take us through will focus on the caption in times like these. In times like these, it is not going to be topical, but it's going to be an exposition. I just want to take some scriptures as regarding what Jesus said. That when we are in the end times or regarding the end times, the things we should look out for and what we should expect and how we should live. So my series or the teachings that will be taken will be having uh, from this, this uh, today and the next week and the weeks ahead is going, going to be focused on the caption in times like these. In times like these. And I'll come your way with different scriptures so that we will prepare ourselves and then know what God is having in store for us or has in store for us. I beg your pardon. So, one of the most important things that we all have to look out, uh, be uh, careful about is the words, the words, the words of a man or of a dying man. When a man is about to die, the words that comes out of his mouth is very, very important. When you visit people on their sick birth or on their dying birth, and then you listen to their wishes and the things they say, it's one of the most relevant messages you can ever find. If you should. So Jesus in his ministry, getting to the tail end of his ministry, made certain things, preached certain messages and reminded us of the end times that when he has left us and has gone to heaven and he's going to come back again. What are the things that we should expect? What are the things that is going to happen? And Jesus Christ brought our mind to this. So I want you to come with me to the book of Matthew chapter 24 verses 1 to 14. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 to 14. And like I said earlier, I'm talking on the caption, in times like these, in times like these. So let's read Matthew 24, verse 1 downwards. It says that, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye, not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceives you. Take these things Carefully, look at these things carefully. So uh, as I'm reading, I'll, I'll just come back again and then I'll just draw your mind onto something. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars that ye shall not be troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and he shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many, and many false prophets shall, arise, shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nation. And then shall the end come. Beloved, this is going to be our focus for our Bible studies tonight. Jesus said something. About the end of age. He gave us a snapshot. Of how the world. Is going to look like. Before he comes. Or before his second coming. And so Bible says that. He went out. And departed from the temple with the disciples. To show him the buildings of the temple. How magnificent the temple was. Such a great edifice. Jesus showed the disciples that look at how big this temple is. How this mighty building is. You can liken it unto the Vatican. 
One of the ma magnificent buildings you can ever think of on this earth. You can never take the Vatican out. It's one of the most dynamic buildings in history that we all cherish and celebrate. The marble walls, the golden roof, and all the things you can think of. And so Jesus set his disciples to a place like that. And then he shows them something and tells them that if look at how magnificent this temple is. There is going to come a time that one stone of this temple is not going to lie on the other. Which means that everything we have raised on this earth, be it be it temples, be it, uh, be it uh, businesses, be it buildings, whatsoever. They're all going to come down one day. Have you thought of this? And so the Bible says that the disciples came to him when he sat on the Mount of Olives. And they privately asked him that, tell us, tell us, tell us. What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus did not hide this information from them. It was recorded in scripture. Jesus satisfied their longings by, by bringing the mind of the disciples unto what the signs of the end times is. And today that is what I just want us to look at briefly. In times like these, that which Jesus prophesied or that which Jesus taught about that this was what was going to happen is this what we are seeing is that the things that Jesus said are they the same things that we are seeing today so let's look at it so in times like these what are we supposed to look out for just as the disciples came to Jesus on the Mount of Olives and they asked him that what will be the sign of your coming what are the things we should look out for when the world is coming to an end. And Jesus answered them. And said. He answered and said unto them. So in times like this. As Jesus said in those days. In times like this we live. What are we supposed to look out for? As Jesus said. Number one. We should look out for deception. Because Jesus said that. Take heed that no man deceives you. So one of the signs of these times we have to be watchful, we have to be looking out for is deception. Because Jesus said it that before the end of the world, there shall be many what? Deception. Because many people shall come in his name and they shall say that I am Christ and they shall deceive many. So for you and I to know the times in which we live in and prepare ourselves and know what to do, we should understand that the times in which we live in are times of deception. So deception shall arise. There shall be so much of deception. People will come in the name of Christ saying, I am Christ. And they shall deceive many. So in times like these, I'm admonishing us as children of God, as sons of God, that we should be mindful of the deception that is going to come in the world or that has come into the world. So in times like this, number one, look out for what? Deception. There is going to be so much deception. So beware. Jesus admonished us and told us to take heed. That no man deceives you. And so what do we do? We have to hold on to what we have believed. In the face of technological advancement. In the face of, 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 of the world becoming a global village. In the face of the world, I mean, becoming, becoming, becoming something more sophisticated than we ever th thought it. I mean, the world is becoming so, so, so wonderful. I mean, something we've never imagined. New things are coming in each and every day. Be careful of deception. Beware of deception. So that is one of the first, the first thing Jesus admonishes us or Jesus tells us to look out for as one of the signs. Number two, he said something that, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So the second thing Jesus is telling us, in times like these, we should be mindful that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Day in and day out, we keep seeing North Korea, 
testing their missiles. And it's so interesting, it's so funny that even in this, in this time of COVID-19, I mean, they are testing their nuclear weapons. I mean, the whole nations, nations, you know, prior to uh, the new, uh, COVID-19, you could, you could see many nations testing their nuclear weapons. You could hear wars and rumors of wars in places. I mean, you, you are seeing a picture of what is happening unless you are out of touch of reality. I'm only trying to bring our mind to these things. So let us be watchful and let us be mindful of these happenings. In times like these, there shall be wars and rumors of wars. So you seeing wars and rumors of wars is not a sign for you to be what? For you to be afraid because Jesus already warned us. He already told us about it. The next point, he says that for nations shall what? Rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. So in times like these... What are we going to see? There's not, there's not supposed to be any special prophecy coming from any man of God or coming from anybody because the scripture has already outlined the things we should look out for when we are in the end times. So he says that nation will rise against nation. Now there is a lot that is going on. We all know where this coronavirus is. The epicenter where it originated from, China. And many countries are now, you know, many companies are now leaving China. And there are a lot of things that is going on. A lot of accusation. And there are a lot of things nations want to rise against another nation. Saying that it is their fault. The continent of Europe. How they are seeing America. How America is seeing Africa. How the Asians are seeing Africans. A lot of things. I'm not here to, to say certain things. But I'm only here to remind us. And to help us know. And to be mindful and watchful of what is going on. So that we will not be blind to happenings. Jesus already told us. Kingdom will rise against kingdoms. There shall be famine. And pestilence, we all know what this coronavirus is doing to us. The sharing of food. A lot of people are, I mean, are going out begging for food. You know, people have it difficult to get, get, get food to eat. And stuff like that. And these are things Jesus Christ told us. So in times like this, we should be mindful that there is going to be famine. There is going to be pestilences. It didn't say pestilence. So I'm not a prophet of doom, but this is not going to be the only thing that is going to hit the earth. Let us watch out. Until Jesus come, the world and the church should prepare for pestilences. So don't think that when we come out of this COVID-19 fight, that is all. I'm not saying my own words, but that's what the scripture said. That there shall be famines with us. And there shall be pestilences with us. And there shall be earthquakes. Even in the midst of this, of this COVID-19, in California, in some part of America, you, hear, you, you are hearing, we are hearing earthquakes all around. You hear a lot of things going on in diverse places. Because Jesus already told us about it. And he said that all these are the beginning of sorrows. So in times like this, we should understand and we should know that sorrows will what? Will abound. There will be so much sorrows. And Jesus is bringing our minds onto this. That we should be mindful. We should be watchful. In times like this, there will be sorrows. But what did Christ tell us? In times like this, Christ is telling us that uh, you shall be delivered. You, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. What is he saying to us? He's saying to the church. He's saying to the body of Christ that you shall be delivered up to be afflicted. They shall kill you and you shall be hated of nations for my name's sake. Because we stand for the name of Jesus. A lot of people, even in this very time, a lot of people are speaking and they are saying all kinds of things. Where is their Jesus? If they claim that their Jesus is, is the God, is God and can do, why is their Jesus not saving them? Why is their Jesus not talking? Their Jesus has been silent. Their Jesus is not doing anything. 
a lot of people are saying all, all kinds of things. And there is a lot of hatred for the body of Christ. There is a lot of hatred for those that name the name of the Lord. There is a lot of hatred for all those who claim that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. For all of us who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb and who answer to the name of Jesus Christ, these are the things Jesus Christ told us that we should what? We should be, there will be that hatred that we shall be hated of all nations because we hold on to Christ. And people will not understand why, I, I mean, we are holding on to Jesus, even in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of this storm, like I said earlier, if you believe in Jesus, why is your Jesus not coming to save you? Look, our Jesus has conquered everything. And there are things he told us already, and we are mindful of. He said in John 14 that we should not let our heart be troubled. We should believe in him, and that he's going to prepare a place for us. No matter what this earth turns out to be, Jesus shall redeem us from every pestilence and from anything that is going to come to us. We are not afraid because God is with us. His name is Emmanuel. That means God is with us. A lot shall be killed. People, you shall be hated of all nations for the name of Jesus. And again, he says that one of the things you should also look out for is that they say that many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. So it is admonishing the body of Christ that we should be mindful of what? Of offenses. Offenses will come. So in times like this, watch out for offenses and betrayals and hatred. So when if, so whilst you are seeing hatred, offenses, and betrayals, it is because Jesus Christ already told us that before the end of the world or before he comes, these are the things that will precede his coming. And he has already told us so that we will what? We will be mindful of them. I'm only trying to expose what the scripture has already said. I'm just highlighting them for our what? For our thinking that we should think of these things. Jesus has already told us. In times like this, as I, as, I, as I draw down to my conclusion, it says that, and many false prophets shall arise, shall rise and shall deceive many. So in times like this, we should be what? We should be mindful of what? False prophets. People who claim to be what? To be of God and they claim to have received new truth, new messages from the Lord. We should be mindful. Everybody is talking in this COVID-19. The Lord showed me this. The Lord told me this. I saw this. I saw that. Jesus has already told us. A lot of these things will happen. Be mindful. Be watchful of these things. And then be glued to the word of God. So that you are not taken by surprise. And he says that iniquity shall also abound. And the love of many shall wash go. You realize that even in the midst of all this trouble. A lot. A lot will happen. Iniquity. Wickedness shall abound. And you will wonder where, 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 I mean, what humanity is becoming. These are the things that because of this, the love of many shall wash gold. People would not even want to do, I mean, good again. People wouldn't want to show love again because iniquity will what? Will abound. And Jesus has already told us all these things. But he said to us that those that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. This is a word of consolation Jesus is giving to us. Because he is with us. That he that shall endure unto the end. So we pray for the spirit of endurance to come upon the church. And to come upon us. So that we can endure unto the end. Holding on to the confession of our faith. Holding on to the tenant of our faith. Not giving in to the pressures of life. Not giving in to the things that are detecting to us. And the things that is happening around us. But understanding that Jesus said that lo. And I am with you even to the end of this age. And the final thing he said in the verse 14 which I'm ending with, he says that, and the gospel, and this gospel of the kingdom, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the world for a witness unto all nations, then the end shall come. And so as I close on our teachings for today, in times like this, Jesus is telling us that the word, this gospel of the kingdom shall travel. It shall go to the length and breadth of this earth. For a witness unto the nations, then the end shall come. So what I'm leaving you with today is that 
let's take this gospel of the kingdom to the end of the world for a witness for all that Jesus has said and then the end shall come. May God bless us and keep us and keep our heart from every troubles. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Give us understanding and give us insight and help us that we will have the spirit of endurance. We will endure to the end. And this gospel of the kingdom, we will carry it forward. We will carry it to the nations for a witness. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. There is a kingdom sound. There is a kingdom sound. Everybody say that. There is a kingdom sound. Say it again. There is a kingdom sound. And I want you to understand this, that there is always a sound that precedes a move of God. Everybody say that. There's always a sound that precedes the move of God. Whenever you will find deliverance, wherever you will find healing, wherever you find a move of God, it is always associated with a sound. I want us to take just maybe 30 seconds and we're going we're gonna to sing this song. We're going to raise it as an offering to the Lord. But I want us to take about maybe just 30 seconds, if you will. Brother, I just want you to minister on that, on that guitar. I want you to raise your hands in his presence and let's just worship God all over this room. Come on, everybody, let's worship God all over this room. Hallelujah. You have one.